Uh, another interesting example that actually looks very similar to the traffic uh, case is the breaking of waves in a in a shore. So if you look at the breaking of waves, the waves coming in from the deep side of the ocean, the propagation of information is fast in the deep side of the ocean. As you get shallower, the propagation of information is slow, so you get these uh, converging characteristics, which I need to remind you. So how does the nonlinear PD develop discontinuity? Right, so we were looking at uh, a single spatial dimension, dfdu plus df of u, dx is equal to zero. This kind of uh, a single dimensional scalar nonlinear PD with no source terms. Okay, we can first of all write this differential equation in this so called uh, primitive way, which is using a uh, chain rule on the df dx. So what I do using chain rule, this can be written as df times du times what? du dx, right. Okay, and then if I have a characteristic line in the space-time dimension so that the slope of the line, delta x, delta t, if the, not the slope, but the reciprocal of the slope of the line, so if dx over dt is actually equal to df du, then du, which is uh, at, okay, so, so along this line, so th let's say this line is x of t, of x and t, and t dt is actually equal to zero. So, so you can do this analysis simply by using, again, chain rule on this. And you're going to see after I apply chain rule to this and use this equation, I get exactly the left hand side of this differential equation, which is equal to zero. Right? So I think I've done this uh, several times, but like this is in a more general differential equation where this dfu is neither a big U a constant, which is what we have been analyzing our, in our linear differential equations. Nor is this dfdu just equal to small u, the solution, which is what we looked at uh, last week on the Burgess equation. Right? So in general, you can always derive this kind of characteristic curves, the slope of which, or the inverse of the slope of which, is df over du. Now for a nonlinear differential equation, nonlinear non means f, the flux, is no longer a linear function of u. Think of in our traffic equation case. F being a nonlinear function of u simply means, in that case, u is the density of cars, right? Now, the flux being a nonlinear function of u, remember the flux is velocity times the density. F being a nonlinear function of u just means velocity is not a constant, it just means the traffic flow on the car. Not every car drives at the same speed. So you can easily get nonlinearity in this kind of differential equations, right? I mean, in, a, in a highway, of course, the, the more packed the cars are, the slower they typically drive. They have to drive. So, so you get nonlinearities in that case, and the df over du, that means if f is nonlinear, it's not a constant. All right. So, for example, in traffic flow, your, your, uh, u, which is the density, and uh, uh, being the x-axis, the flux being the y-axis, can you imagine how the, uh, how the f as a function of u look like? Is it a straight line? Huh? It's a parabola going which way? Going that way, that way, that way. So first of all, we know that when the density is equal to zero, what's the flux? Zero, right? So this point, there is no doubt, OK? And actually, when the cars are all packed like a parking lot, what is the flux? Zero, right? I mean, if the cars are packed so much that 
they achieve a parking lot density, the flux okay. is zero. So the flux function should actually be looking something like that. At a certain density, the flux achieves a maximum. Right, so so this is the kind of nonlinear flux we are talking about. So so for that equation, uh, you may basically have different slopes. Um, let let's imagine. Let's imagine the density of cars are low on this side, and the density of cars are high on this side. Okay, so so that means like in front of the highway the the cars are packed uh, in the back the cars are sparse now how does the slope dfdu increase when i go from the low density regions to the high density regions how does dfdu would dfdu be increasing over here or dfdu be decreasing over here increases and decreases no, remember this is F. This is not DFU. Uh, DFU is actually the slope of this line. It's decreasing, right? It's decreasing. So at some point, when I get over this maximum point, actually DFU is what? Negative, right? So so in the low density regions, the characteristic goes like this, and in the high density regions, the characteristics may go backwards. Right? Okay, it's like information propagates forward if the density is low, information propagates backward if the density is high. So at some point, if the characteristic converge, what happens? What happens when the characteristics actually reach each other? Zero velocity? No, I mean, the, remember the solution at each characteristic is constant. So these are also like contour lines. We get a discontinuity, yes. So as the characteristics reach a certain point, a discontinuity forms. That's actually how discontinuities appear in the solution of conservation laws. That's when in different regions of the solution, the information propagates at different speed, and at some point they collide, forming a discontinuity. That's how shocks form in aerodynamics. Right? That's how, uh, like, shock, like water um, in, in in flow of water, like a high speed region of the water can collide, forming a shock wave. That's also how uh, a solution to the so-called shallow water equation forming discontinuities. That's also how shock waves forming in traffic flows. All right. And in, in in reservoir engineering, uh, people getting getting oils out of the ground, they, they also get shock waves, which they call the fronts, right? In, in which region, the concentration of different species become sharply different. So so this is this is how uh, nonlinearities are developed in PDS.